And this is who we're talking to today. Dr. I got one too. Oh, good. We all. <laughs> there we go. What right. the heck of a commercial friend. I love the title, Whole yeah. Brain Living. What made you choose that title? So I was a brain scientist at Harvard. I had a major hemorrhage in the left half of my brain. And inside of the course of four hours, I could not walk, talk, read, write, or recall any of my life. But that's the output behavioral end of it. From the inside, it meant I lost my left hemisphere. And in the absence of my left hemisphere, what I gained was a real clear insight into what's going on in our right hemispheres. And I was completely conscious I just simply had none of the skill sets of that left brain. And so I used the skills of my right brain to rebuild the circuits in my left brain to rebuild abilities in the external world. And it took me eight years to do that. You are a definite bridge between science and spirituality. You are that, what's the middle class? The corpus callosum. That's, that's you. you. <laughs> yeah, well, it is. I'm kind of like a big highway for yeah. what's going on in really helping people understand these two hemispheres. We have the power to choose moment by moment who and how we want to be in the world. And we have two emotional groups of cells and two thinking groups of cells. And each of those results in a very specific skill set and personality profile. And so for me, whole brain living truly is realizing what are the magnificent skill sets of each of these four modules of cells, getting to know them so we can actually learn to differentiate who's who inside of ourselves so that then we can choose on purpose uh, who and how we want to be. I like what you said about um, when you react to something, you said it's 90 seconds. Yeah. And to me, it feels like about five hours. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> so from the moment, at any moment in time, there's only three things going on inside of our head. One, we're thinking thoughts. Two, we're feeling emotions. And three, we're running a physiological response to what we're thinking or what we're feeling. And they're all knitted together. So the moment I think a thought, let's say, uh, there's a person from my past who every time I think of them, I get angry. All right. And this was 20 years ago. They did me wrong, but I'm holding the grudge, right? So I think the thought about that person that links automatically to my anger circuit because they're linked together. And then for anger, for me to have a physiological response to anger, noradrenaline, a chemical gets dumped into my bloodstream. It floods through me, it flushes out of me. And that takes less than 90 seconds. So we have these neural loops, emotional neural loops that actually take less than 90 seconds. Now for your ability to like give it up after five hours is you continue to keep rethinking the thought that's re-stimulating that circuit. Boy, do you have good focus because that's essentially what you're doing. You're focusing over and over again on that old loop. The first piece of any of this material is the willingness to look at yourself and to learn about these four different parts of ourselves and then say, okay, is this the character I want to be in this moment so that we don't have to have the automatic reactivity after that 90 seconds of trigger. And then we get to pick and choose moment by moment after that as we navigate our lives. And that's in here, there's a big section just for our listeners. You know, it's 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 brain. That's the is, is it an acronym, right? Yes. To breathe, recognize, appreciate, inquire, and then navigate through these four characters. Yes. My takeaway from your book: two things. That at one point you say, "I worked hard in in therapy or whatever I was doing, not to feel character two, right?" Uh, character, true, too bad. Everything else good. And here, at one point, and it, and I burst into tears when you said, "I'm going to get, I'm going to get teary-eyed right now." You said that if it wasn't for my character too, I would not have felt my depth of emotion. Right. My name for my character too is uh, Town Crier, mm -hmm. and 
I felt such a, see, it chokes me up. I felt such a gratitude exactly. for this, uh, this little town crier trumpeting these little alarms, do you know? And I felt such a sense of gratitude for this part of me that is really just trying to keep me safe. That's exactly right. Because I think we spend a lot of time trying to push this away as opposed to just, you know, when my kid would have a tantrum, when my kid would have a tantrum, I'd hug him or her. Exactly. It's a scream for protect me. I need to feel safe. I need to be loved. Right. And that's why I felt this was so powerful that you are trying to have us appreciate, not negate. Oh, I tell people all the time, I don't mind if you're miserable, as long as you remember to enjoy it. <laughs> it is delicious. Being miserable is delicious. Being angry, matter in hell, it's delicious. Being completely open and vulnerable and tearful, it is delicious. Grief is all enveloping. It is delicious. These are delicious parts of who we are. That's exactly right. You know, Matt Kahn, this, this other spiritual teacher, says um, people will come to him and say, I don't see abundance. I have no abundance. And he says, you have so many negative thoughts. You're very abundant. That's right. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. You yeah. know, that same yeah. thing. Yeah, um, it's like who's making the judgment call? You're alive. You know, when I lost the character one and the character two of the left brain, then everything was blissful euphoria. It's not that it gets old, but I missed my really deep emotions, those, those negative emotions. And here's one of the things that I think everybody needs to realize about those in-depth emotions is if you push them away, it's like clogging a pipe, a pipe, a pipe. The water's pushing in and you're blocking the flow and eventually the pipe's gonna blow. But if you allow yourself to experience these emotions, then the pipe opens, you flow, and you actually, it dissipates the need for more of that because you've let it flow, unless it's one of those negative emotions like rage, and you're simply creating a loop of habitual emotion that you're running over and over again. And one of the things about the brain and neurons is that the more time you spend running any circuit, the stronger that circuit becomes and the easier it is for that circuit to get triggered. So looking at our habits, our habitual way of being, it's just cells. And I'll tell you, when I'm feeling myself getting really angry, I will automatically go now and say, these are cells. Do I really want to let you push those buttons so I run that trigger? And it's like, I have that power. We all have that power to say, no, I'm not going to let you make me angry. And when someone shows up as their character too, their little unhappy self, that's an opportunity for any of us to say, I can get right back in your face and be a tit for tat little character too right at you. Or I can show up and say, this is an opportunity for me to love another human being. Yeah. I don't have to bite them back. I can simply love them in spite of themselves. And that love truly dissipates that fear. I, I've been in situations where I thought, oh, this is not a good situation. But when I've come at it with love, it totally changes. Yeah. And if it doesn't change it for the other person because they're not ready for it to change them, it certainly changes the experience you just had and how you feel about yourself as you present yourself as a human being in the presence of another. What do you personally do to keep your brain healthy? So I do a variety of things. First of all, I do pay very close attention to what I eat. So I'm very careful about that. I'm careful about my caffeine because I care about my quality sleep. I am the queen of sleep. And I think you should sleep when your body is tired and it wants to go to sleep. So I pay very close attention to what I eat. I pay very close attention to my sleep. It's my number one priority. Um, I pay very close attention to who I hang out with. I pay very close attention to the influence I allow. What is the energy that I bring to others? And part of that responsibility is what do I allow into the presence of me? Uh, is it healthy? Is it not healthy? I'm always asking myself this question. Uh, but I think that, that the biggest thing is every morning when I wake up, 
It doesn't matter which of my four characters wakes up first because they all wake up at different times, right? But whoever wakes up first, I bring in character four before I get myself out of bed. I keep my eyes shut and I say, oh my God, I woke up today. I woke up today. And I open my eyes and I look around and I think, oh my God, I'm alive. Today, I am still alive. Oh my God. And I wiggle my toes and I wiggle my fingers and I wiggle my bum. And it's like, oh my God, not only am I alive, but my body parts are working. And then after, you know, half a dozen, oh my gods, it's like, wow, I am so cool. It's like, let's start the day, yeah. right? And whatever it brings, I will face and I will in, I will interact with them. There's four of us in here and I, I say thank you that they're all four and I got them to work with and it's like, wow, here we go again. That's how I wake up. And I do that faithfully, at least for the first few minutes of my day. And it changes everything. And then at night when I go to bed, it's like, wow, I had a day. I wonder if I'll wake up tomorrow. You know, I always ask myself, I wonder if I'll wake up tomorrow and I'll be grateful if I do. And if I don't, I'm off with God. Who cares? Yeah. So I'm good one way or the other. And when you can live your life good with death or good with life and good with the energy that you have and the fact that, oh my gosh, my eyes work and my mouth works and my legs work. Oh my gosh, there's a million things. You, you are. have eyes that see, do you have a voice that speaks? It's not that you don't have abundance. It's that you're not focused on the abundance that you have. That's right. That's right. That's exactly it. You are amazing. And I hope you write another book so we can talk to you again. <laughs> hey, call me anytime. I'm friendly. Okay. <laughs> we are. You're the best. You're the best. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate it. Many blessings to you.